Supabase, the open source Firebase alternative. That's an extraordinary claim that will require some extraordinary evidence, because Firebase is not an easy thing to replace. It's a whole suite of tools that include things like authentication, a database you can listen to in real time, file storage, serverless functions, and SDKs that can easily tie this infrastructure together on iOS, Android, and the web. In today's video, we'll find out if Supabase lives up to its marketing claims. But first, a quick disclaimer. I've been called the James Brown of Firebase. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the product and used it to build Fireship.io, and have helped a ton of other people build their own products with Firebase. So I'm definitely biased, but Google has never paid me for any of this work, which means I can say whatever the hell I want, and I'm intimately familiar with its weaknesses. It's great to see more competition, because that motivates everybody to build better products, which ultimately benefits us developers. Let's start by taking a look at feature parity, which isn't at all a fair comparison because Supabase is brand new and Firebase has been around for a long time. Currently, Supabase offers a database, user authentication, and file storage, with functions coming soon. Those are some of the most important infrastructure pieces in Firebase, but you'll notice a few things missing, like static site hosting, machine learning tools, and things like Crashlytics and Test Lab for mobile apps, and push notifications as well as Google Analytics. So Firebase has way more features, but Supabase has one big advantage, and that's the fact that it only uses open source technologies for its platform. That means you could run Supabase with Docker and host your own Firebase alternative on Google Cloud Platform if you wanted to. That's a big deal, because it means you don't face the vendor lock-in issue. When you use Firebase, you're locked in with Google. You're signing a contract with Alphabet the corporation, giving them the power to destroy your business if they decide that's what should happen. Now that's extremely unlikely if you do what you're told, but now let's take a look at the services Supabase offers to see how they stack up to Firebase, starting with user authentication. Now first I'll point out that Supabase is not a one-to-one -one mapping of Firebase. It just provides tools that do approximately the same thing. I built a little demo with Supabase, and I can tell you that the developer experience for user authentication is very similar to Firebase. You have a dashboard where you can view data for all your users, and then an area where you can modify email templates being sent to those users. They have sign-in methods for email password, all the major OAuth providers, and also passwordless auth with a magic email link. The only big one that's missing that you'll find in Firebase is phone authentication. Now when it comes to the actual code, you'll be able to get a user logged in with one or two lines of code just like Firebase. I actually really like how it returns an error as an object here, because in Firebase you have to wrap it in a try-catch block to catch errors. That's a small thing, but a nice touch to improve the developer experience in JavaScript. Now one thing that Supabase does that's very cool that Firebase doesn't, is that it automatically creates a database record for the user. If we go to the database tab, you'll notice a users table there under the auth schema. It contains metadata about the user, but most importantly, it's there to facilitate backend security. If we go back to authentication, you'll notice a tab for policies, which we can use to create database rules using SQL, as opposed to Firestore, where we write rules in common expression language, which tends to be pretty difficult code to maintain as your app grows in complexity. Now, I haven't built a complex app with Supabase, but the idea of writing security rules in SQL is pretty appealing. But we haven't even talked about databases yet. In Firebase, we have two different database options, but I'll be focusing on Firestore, which is very similar to MongoDB, and is a no SQL document database. It's really easy to work with, scales automatically, and handles relational data data fairly well. However, it does have some limitations, and scaling certain types of data relationships can be extremely difficult. If you need anything resembling full-text search, Firestore actually just recommends you use a third-party service like Algolia. And to be honest, that's kind of disappointing for a company that's built on top of a search engine. Supabase uses Postgres as its database, a relational SQL database that's been around forever. But SQL databases are expensive, hard to use, and difficult to scale, allegedly. Supabase addresses those concerns by first handling the scaling for you automatically, and also by providing a dashboard and SDK to make working with the database much easier. Now under the hood, the platform has already created a database for us, and if we go to the tables page, we can start adding new tables to it. Once we have a table, we can then add new columns to it one by one. Supabase will automatically update the schema and handle the migrations for us in the background. Once we have a few columns, we can then start adding data to it by inserting new rows. That makes it really easy to visualize and administer your database, but how do we use it in an actual front-end application like a web app? Check this out. If we go over to the API tab, it automatically generates code samples for us based on the structure of our database. Instead of writing raw SQL code, you can use the SDK to access your data in a DSL that makes a little more sense. Like, you can use GraphQL in the select method to grab data from a different table, instead of having to write out a full SQL join. Overall, this feels kind of similar to Hasura, which is also an awesome product that I'll make a video on soon. 
The next thing I want to talk about, though, is real time. If you're building a real time app, you can do so with one line of code with very little configuration and Firebase. The client side SDKs are very sophisticated and do things like optimistic updates, where it updates the UI before the actual change is committed to the back end, making everything feel instantaneous for your end user. It also supports offline mode, which is a big deal for PWAs and mobile apps. In Supabase, you can subscribe to real time updates, but that's pretty much it. And to do so, you need to go to the replication tab in the database and enable it for the tables that you want to listen to. Another issue is that apparently the security policies will not work with real-time data, although I think they have plans to address that in the future. The bottom line is that if you're looking to build a robust real-time feature, you'll have a lot more work to do in Supabase than you would in Firebase. But now let's shift gears to pricing, because Firebase is really difficult to beat on price. So both products have a base free tier that's really only useful for experimentation. If you're building something serious, on Firebase you'll use the pay-as-you-go plan. Every individual service has a free tier, and you only pay for what you use beyond the free threshold. On Supabase, you pay $25 a month for up to 8 gigabytes of database space and 100,000 users, compared to Firestore, which would cost about $1.50 for 8 gigabytes of data. That may sound expensive, but in Firestore, you also pay for the number of reads and writes to the database, which tends to make up the bulk of your monthly cost. But in Supabase, it looks like you have unlimited API calls and network traffic to your database, which is an amazing deal, because normally you have to pay for CPU use to handle the traffic going into your database, which gets extremely expensive at scale. Even for a relatively small database on Google Cloud with four CPUs, you're looking at almost 300 bucks a month. Now, if you need more than 8 gigabytes on Supabase, you can go up to the pay-as-you-go plan, which will cost an additional 12 cents per month per gigabyte which is also an incredible deal, and far below anything offered by any of the major cloud providers. Supabase originally had their infrastructure on DigitalOcean, but recently migrated over to AWS. They have at least $6 million in funding currently, but you have to wonder how long they can sustain this pricing. Startups don't need business models that make money, but you would be taking a bigger risk as a developer, because if Supabase fails to raise more money in the future, I doubt their current pricing model would even cover their AWS bill, whereas Google can lose as much money on Firebase as it wants, not to mention it owns all the underlying data centers, so it's very unlikely that Google will ever drop the platform or change the pricing dramatically, because we all know Google definitely doesn't have a reputation for killing off products. And that brings us to the question, is Supabase legit? First of all, I wouldn't really look at this product and call it a Firebase alternative. That's really just a marketing hack to get people's attention and get videos like this made. But it does have the potential to get there someday. If you happen to be a Firebase product manager, please add an SQL database to the platform. I would definitely consider using Supabase for the database alone. It's really the only feature that stands out to me as offering some potentially major advantages over Firebase. The option to self-host is also a nice safety net in case the tech overlords ever turn on you. But in reality, the reason people use a backend as a service is so they don't have to self-host their own backend. One other issue with Supabase right now is that it only has a JavaScript SDK. Firebase is really popular with mobile game developers, and you can't really call Supabase a Firebase alternative until SDKs exist for iOS and Android. Overall, I think it's definitely a promising product, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.